Hello guys, welcome back to the next arc of Mr. Iron Bar on the main servers. That's right, this is not leaks. I wrapped up leaks already, so if you want to check out leaks stuff, check out the playlist for Shadow Rex 3 if you are into that. If not, anyways, so in the last video, I just started next. I introduced to you kind of like the drops, how it was on like the first day and so on. And we did get the next pet on the way. Now today's episode is about where things stand in terms of the grind, the techniques, and all that so i'll briefly talk about how the meta has changed over time to present day amazing start to the reintroduction of my next grind on here but yeah won't spoil you're just gonna have to watch and see where we're at jesus christ man that was i oh, was trying to sell sell this when people did oh i get all the drops though <laughs> thanks to the the random team for inviting me though So I'm going to briefly talk about how the meta has evolved over time. So initially in the start of this video, I went full range setup because that's just how everybody perceived the next boss to be kind of like a range only boss. But as time went on, people of course start experimenting a bit more. There were rumors that Inquisitor with the Inquisitor Mace was actually best in slot on the boss. Assuming that you can actually melee it because sometimes it would uh, use protect from melee. Most of the fight though, you can. And uh, yeah, a lot of people are saying melee with Inquisitors was actually a lot better than range. So uh, I went ahead and tested Inquisitor and surely enough, Inquisitor was definitely noticeably more accurate. I was hitting a lot more often than the Tebow. And so I kind of uh, went with the melee setup, but again, we did not know what the stats of the boss was like yet because Jagex prevented people from stat checking the boss using the Lunar spell until a bit later. People's guesses were right because Jax let us use that spy shortly after and it was revealed that Nexus defense was mostly weak to melee, especially stab, not crush. So quickly after that, Inquisitor was scrapped because just max melee with like Bandos or Torva with Garazi right here was actually the best overall DPS on this boss. So you still need to bring range with you no matter what. And it's also good for... Uh, running towards the boss or towards the minions because this map is huge and she moves a lot so being able to range is still really useful overall but when you can melee the boss you definitely want to especially with a rapier because uh the dps is easily over 30 percent than that of ranging even with the zari bow with the ruby bolts included and all that and the t-bow it just does not compare to melee so overall, the current meta for Nex is split between two styles. There is the range focus style still designed for multiple kills a trip because you can use the Zark crossbow with either an Elijah or a Spectral Shield to reduce a lot of damage. And you can pack a ton of brutes that way because it's minimal switches, meaning you could go for a slower kill overall, but more kills guaranteed per trip. And I can't do that because I don't have Zarya crossbow to make it worthwhile. And then there is the hybrid method between a mix of range and melee, preferably with a rapier. And in this video, you'll definitely see me use the rapier a lot more. So throughout this grind in this video, I will be changing my setup quite a lot, but hopefully you guys can follow along because I do explain a bit of the reasoning, of course. So earlier in the next grinds, I was definitely focusing a lot more on the range setup but I gradually transitioned to melee because I often found that to be a lot more efficient with the way that we do our nexus with stocking up KC. I'll explain a bit more about that later on in this video. More damage overall too. With <gasps> what the foot? I just I got zero god sword. Oh, okay. If you are enjoying the video so far, definitely give it a like. I would highly appreciate that. And maybe even consider subscribing because there's a lot more coming up for this next arc. You don't want to miss it. If you didn't know, the Zaros Hill is actually the rarest drop from Nex. And that means I have the two rarest drops from Nex. The Pet and the Hilt. The Hilt is about two to three times more common. Then the Torva and like the Vampires is even the crossbow. So yeah, I'm pretty lucky at getting the most rare drops. So in terms of full completion, that's nice to get out of the way early. That's for sure. So next isn't a soloable boss. There's been one instance where it was solo, like legit. 
solo by one person from starfish but it involved a lot of glitching and i think it's already patched and it took like three hours so yeah basically it's just not a solo boss and that means it is a very team orientated boss and one of the things that i would love to do whenever i do team stuff is to be able to split with the boys so i typically go with people that i know or people that i know well and they're friends so there's a lot of you know trust involved and i like it that way if i get something i will split with them with my normal account right because i have money so the next items are fairly stable now which means that we can just look at the trade history price of that day to do the split i don't actually have to drop the hill thing fully but the hilt was about 82 84 mil so that means the other four people can get a split of 21 mil each because i'm keeping the hilt so i don't get anything so let's talk about the Zaros God Sword. It is the fifth God Sword to be released after many years apart. And it is aligned with the God of Zaros, of course. And the stats are the same as any other God Sword. But the special attack, of course, is different. It's called Blood Sacrifice. It uses 50% special attack. And when it is activated, its accuracy is double. You get 10% more damage. And if it lands anything higher than a zero, it will heal you for 25 damage and the target will also take 25 extra damage on top as long as the target is within foul towers of you when it procs 4.8 seconds later the healing so it's a really interesting ability so this god sword technically is more consistent at healing your hp than a sarah god sword but the sarah god sword could potentially heal higher and you also get prayer but if HP is more important though, I can see the Sorrow's God Sword being a bit more useful in some situations. I've heard that it's actually pretty good at the next boss herself. But I didn't get around to experimenting with it enough to really say. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to cover a bit of the uses of the Sorrow's God Sword in the next video. I'll try my best to test it and talk about it a bit. But not for this video, unfortunately. So next in the original game, the minions used to drop this thing called the Ancient Ceremonial and the minions outside would two at a lower rate. And if you had the full Ancient Ceremonial set, you could bypass the KC, which is amazing. And I thought that was going to be the case here, but they decided to not make that a thing. So the Ancient Ceremonial is more common, I believe, this time around. And yeah, you can just collect it to collect it. And yeah, you get collection log pop up, you know, mini dopamines. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it doesn't do anything. So I will, you know, try to get them all. But I should be able to just get them by grinding next lot. Since, yeah, I've been getting a bunch of pieces. I'm almost done already. Ooh, Ancient Ceremonial Legs. Dang, I, I haven't even gotten any dupes. Cool. More extra dopamine. Feels good, man. I'll take it. Just like two more pieces or something. I'm going to be stocking up on KC before I even start the session of next, just because that will save us uh, from having to re KC between every trip. And also, it'll allow us to do comfy one kill trips if we have to, if things go bad. And uh, it's more flexible that way. Because, like, when you go for KC just for one trip, you're kind of forced to try to stay as long as possible. And a lot of times, you'll overstay and then we actually don't even get the kill and we just waste time so stock up kc like this just allows us to be really flexible we can do one kill trips two kill trips depending on whatever happens rng wise or supply wise and we can just keep coming back over and over again without having to wait for everybody to be kc so it's just much nicer way of doing it preferably though there could be ways to improve this boss from jagus's end but this is the best we can do right now the benefit of stocking up KC also means that I can bring more switches for the fight to speed up the boss. Because if you just can't range method the whole time, you could go for really long trips. But again, we're not trying to bother with that. So now we're going for fast kills as a focus. So I can actually bring a bunch of melee switches. So using a rape here is the highest DPS on the boss available. But there's other times in the fight where you can't melee. So... That's why you kind of have to at least bring range. But for this method though, the kills are faster and I don't have to use brews as much for every kill, which is really nice because I can save a lot on brews, save a lot of time prepping brews. And I have so much hard food that, yeah, I can just use that. And the time that I spend making potions will drastically go down. Nice, now we can melee. 
So in terms of hard food, I'll be using manta rays. I have over 10,000 manta rays from doing a variety of other bosses like Zora and Warcath. That, yeah, I've been meaning to use it for something and this is a good time to use it. And another benefit to using melee gear for next is that you can bypass the blood phase a lot faster, exponentially faster. Because that is the phase that slows down the most, the smaller your team size gets. And that will add a lot of time so we can blaze through the blood phase and stop it from healing so much, you know, because we're just skipping that phase as fast as we can. Nice. That was fast. Even though I'm bringing a lot of hard food, I can still easily get two to three kill trips oftentimes because next drops a lot of food most of the time. So you can actually just use that to stay. And that means the KC that you stock up actually goes down a lot slower than normal. It's not actually every entry is 30 because you're gaining KC back while you're staying here. So if you can kill the boss like two to three times, you don't really lose KC. So yeah, I guess we don't always have to do one kill trips. If Nex wants to give us a ton of sharks and stuff, we can just stay e easily. From my experience so far, it's good to stock up at least around 150 KC because that'll give you a lot of kills. And even if you were to die, you won't lose that much of your time because it doesn't take long at all to get like 150 KC. You could be a bit more adventurous and go a bit higher, but it is tilting though if you do die and lose a lot of it. So I'd say about 100 to 200 is a good amount for everybody. Whoa, someone got in the hill horn. Oh my god, dude. Freaking booty got in the hill horn. Holy shit. Yo, that's crazy. Damn, we already saw a big drop. Yo, grats, grats. Holy shit. So the Nahil Horn makes the Zari Crossbow, which is best in slot at next. And it's really powerful here because the Ruby Specs does a lot of work. You can spam it quite often throughout the fight because it is a fairly long fight. And yeah, 110 damage with Rubies every 75%. But uh, we did get a split off of that. Uh, the bow was around like 450 to 500 mil, so yeah, we gain about uh, close to 100 mil uh, per person there. Nice. Damn, I barely use food. Holy shit. That's crazy. <laughs> this one kill, I, I used one dose brew and like hella mantas, bro. Holy shit. Wait, 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 you guys, uh, oh, everyone's teleporting. Oh, no! I lose, like, no food. Because, apparently, Tacit's giving a max hit with the Vine Pots in this setup. So, we're gonna, we're gonna bring the Tacit's bin the Pagations, then. Because that extra max hit is constant, since I'm the Vine Potted for, uh, 90% of the kill. Actually, like, the whole time, because then, my fresh super combat will last all the way, too. Ouch. Oh my god! Torver for him! What? Oh my god, we just got Torver, dude. What? Holy shit, we just got Torver. Dude, two, two days! What? That's crazy! Holy shit. <laughs> That's crazy. That's the best in slot right here at this place. Right, right here, right now. Holy shit. Yo, we just got a Torver. Damn, we're making bang, yo. I mean, Booty got the horn, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I got the helm today. Like, holy shit. And both irons got two big drops. Feels good, man. Uh -huh. But I think he just used the Bandos item like this. Bandos chest plate. Got it, got it. Here we go. And then we use the anvil. Repair your Torah full helm with one Bendosian component. Yes, please. How much uh, XP do I get for this? Yes. Oh, 2.7k. Woo, baby. All right, let's look at the strength bonus. It should give me an extra... What? This thing gives an extra two. That's insane. Wow, that's actually crazy. Damn, this thing gives an extra two. Two strain bonus? Holy shit. That's actually insane. Over over the uh, face guard. Oh my god. Wow. Well, that's a really good upgrade. Holy crap, man. Like, we, we are gonna use this, like, everywhere. Pretty much, mainly. 
Jeez, that's I guess it's one of the best ones to get first for Torva, so we're definitely feeling the luck right now. All right, the rest of this uh, I can make the other Torva, I guess. Oh, 56 with the uh, Zara's God Sword. Let's go. Followed by the 25 HP heal back to me. The spare rune javelins, though. Okay. Holy shit, did we just... Whoa, whoa, holy shit. What? <laughs> we skipped it without even a single reaver. Holy shit, dude, that was crazy. Yep, time to do burr houses. On the main account, because next in small groups, burns through supplies, like brews and restores, like, absolutely insane. So, I, yeah, I need to, like, do my kingdom for herbs, um, and also for the bird houses, and also, yeah, I just gotta plant a lot of snapdragons going forward. Yeah, it's gonna be a, yeah, a lot of farming, baby. A lot of farming. All right, just auto crush a bunch of crushed nests. So that means we're pretty much ready to make more brews. And as a result, I got a bunch of birds' eggs opening all the stuff. So maybe I'll get some evil chicken uh, outfit or something. Wait, now it's keeping track of the offerings? Man, I did like a hundred of these before they had a tracker. And I got one of the, or two. I think I have two evil chicken pieces. 